Okay, good morning, and uh, thank you for your interest in our mission and our program. Uh, if we could r roll the video, we'll uh, set some expectations about what some of the major mission highlights are that you may see throughout the course of Artemis I. Rollout will occur in about two weeks, and that'll signal that launch is near. The entire mobile launch tower, as well as the rocket and the spacecraft, will head out to the launch pad together and be positioned at Launch Complex 39B over a flame trench. We'll load it with cryo, uh, the uh, fuel and oxidizer, into the core stage as well as the upper stage. And when all systems are go, we'll give the go for launch, and Artemis 1 will begin. The 32-story tall rocket will climb its way up through the atmosphere, and in two minutes, all the solid propellant and the boosters will be consumed and jettisoned, as well as all the liquid fuel in eight minutes, uh, and the core stage will be jettisoned. The upper stage, as well as the Orion spacecraft, will then proceed in one lap around the Earth. Orion will deploy its solar rays and get off of battery power, and then we'll commit to the moon at the point of translunar injection. At that point, the rocket has done its job, and now Orion is on its way to the moon. At its closest point, Orion will be just 62 miles from the surface of the moon, and at its farthest point, it'll be 38,000 miles past the far side of the moon, which is a quarter million miles away. When we re return to the Earth, the uh, European service module will be jettisoned. It will have done its job, and Orion will set up for its primary objective, which is Earth reentry. After the uh, peak heating period, the parachutes will deploy, and the spacecraft will splash down the Pacific Ocean off the coast of California, where a uh, U.S. Navy team and NASA team will receive the awaiting uh, spacecraft. We'll retrieve all the data off of it, and that will inform our readiness as well as uh, help us understand um, our ability to fly astronauts on the very next mission on Artemis II. So those are some of the highlights you can expect. We, we intend to bring each and every one of you along throughout the course of the mission. We will share imagery uh, both from the ground as well as the launch vehicle and the spacecraft throughout. Uh, our primary objectives for the mission, we've got four primary objectives. Priority one, is to demonstrate the spacecraft's ability to re-enter at lunar re-entry conditions. We need the rocket to do its job in order to set up those initial conditions. So all that chemical energy that's stored in the solid boosters and liquid, and liquid uh, fuel that's stored in the core stage and the upper stage needs to be delivered uh, to the uh, spacecraft and put in the form of kinetic and potential energy. And then the heat shield will take that back out through aerodynamic drag as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. That's priority number one. Priority number two is to demonstrate the vehicle in the flight environment. That is all the way from the launch pad, all the way out to the moon, and back, back to, um, to Earth. In order to do that, we need to demonstrate the uh, rocket's ability to lift off safely from the launch pad. Uh, that 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust is going to reflect off the launch pad and bounce back up in terms of uh, vibroacoustic shock. We have water sound suppression that is there to dampen that shock as the rocket lifts off. We also have these umbilical arms that are roughly the length of a tractor trailer and weigh thousands of pounds that need to retract in those initial moments at liftoff at first motion and clear the path of the rocket as it accelerates up off the launch pad. As we head up through the atmosphere, we're going to go through the period of air, maximum aerodynamic loading, or max-Q. The rocket and the spacecraft need to survive the, um, the ascent environment. And then all the separation events will jettison the boosters, we will jettison the service module fairings that are an aerodynamic shell that cover the solar rays during the um, Earth ascent. We'll jettison the launch abort system, and then we'll jettison the core stage. All these things need to work perfectly and in sequence in order to put Orion on its way to the moon. We'll demonstrate the propulsion systems to uh, perform the translunar injection maneuver, as well as the ability of Orion to enter a uh, lunar orbit and then return from lunar orbit. We'll communicate with assets that are uh, beyond what we use for low Earth orbit and terrestrial users. Uh, low Earth orbit and terrestrial users ter typically use the tracking and data relay satellites that are in geosynchronous orbit. They typically use the global positioning navigation system that is uh, halfway to uh, geosynchronous orbit. We're going to communicate and navigate using the deep space network, radiometric tracking, and optical navigation. Uh, we are also going to fly out through the Earth's Van Allen radiation belts. We will no longer be afforded the ability to um, uh, have the Earth's magnetic field shield us from the deep space environment. So we're going to fly into the deep space uh, high radiation environment and we'll experience what it's like to, to, um, for our astronauts to fly on subsequent missions under those conditions. So that's priority two, demonstrate the uh, spacecraft and the launch vehicle's ability uh, in the flight environment. Priority three is to simply retrieve the spacecraft. We get the high precision avionics on board 
uh, for uh, programmatic so cost savings and reflight on later flights. We also get the spacecraft structure back for environmental testing on later flights. And then we get all the data that's recorded on board. We're going to have a blackout period uh, during peak heating. A plasma field is going to envelope the spacecraft during reentry, and we will not be able to communicate with it. So the telemeter data uh, that would normally come to Earth is not going to be able to uh, be received on the ground during that period. So we're going to get all this data back to help us understanding uh, our engineering uncertainties as well as uh, what the flight environment was like from launch to splashdown. That's priority three. And then priority four is to uh, perform some payload objectives, and Bavia will talk to you about the payload objectives. It is to perform outreach and share uh, remarkable images with each and every one of you. Uh, images that include Orion taking selfies down the solar ray wings of itself in the foreground, the moon in the background, and the Earth a quarter million miles away. So we intend to bring each of you all along as we uh, conduct this Artemis mission, and uh, we look very much, uh, we very much look forward to bringing each and every one of you on this mission.